and gentlemen, tonight's performance is about to begin. Welcome to the world of sex. I am your host, Dr. Casey, and we have a new guest today. This is Amanda. Amanda, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. My name is Amanda. I am a single mama of two, and I, I own an adult novelty shop talking about everyone's sexual health and wellness. Okay, and how did you get into owning a novelty shop? What what made you go into that field? Um, <laughs> let's start back to when I first started. I first started it when I was 19 under the assumption sex sells. Mm -hmm. Um you know, you heard a lot about the in-home parties back then and how fun they were and this, that, and the other. And I went to a few and of course they made sex fun. Right. But then as I started getting older, I'm like, mm, they really wasn't making sex fun. They were making fun of sex. Right. Making it more hysterical than it was about teaching health and wellness around people's sexual health. I mean, there's a lot about somebody's sexual health that's not taught, that's not talked mm -hmm. about. It's still a forbidden topic. And so as I grew and matured, it became more about uh, talking about people's sexual health and wellness more than here, hey, buy this toy and you're going to have fun right. in your bedroom. Right Now right. it's more of, hey, let's try this. And I guarantee you it's going to help with sex because of this. So now it's more of literally really educating women where, there might not have been any education growing up. And it's so funny that you say that because um, for about, I want to say about six months to a year, I was doing bedroom candy, which is like um, the same type of sex toys and things like that. And I am not a sex toy user, but I wanted to, that was kind of my intro into being a sex coach. So I was trying to just kind of play around in the field to see, what it is um if i would like it and now i am actually about to reintroduce that because i have the world of sex podcast and i'm actually really um diving into the business of sex i think i want to go back to offering that um and so that it's a full kit so if you get me you don't just get me and have to go somewhere else for your other needs but you have everything right there so i am I think I know the answer to this question, but when you <laughs> saw the ad or request for guests, what made you decide that you wanted to be a part of the show? Um, well, I saw that you guys talk about sexual nature and things like that, and it's not very common. Like, like I said, sex is still a taboo conversation amongst a lot of people. Right. And when you say, hey, I, you know, I own an adult novelty shop, they instantly think, oh, here's a dildo pusher. Uh -huh. They're, they're going to come in and say, yeah, I need a toy. And I kind of want to break that cycle because that's all they've had for so long. Like you said, right. you were with bedroom candies. You know, people join pure romance, lion's den, passion parties, and they are not taught any kind of sexology. Right. You know, you have one person telling you, oh, just go to this party, make them laugh, show them a couple of dildos and they're going to buy it. Mm -hmm. Where's that? And sometimes it's like that, health? but. <laughs> you know, I don't look, I'm like you, I don't push the toys. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that I think there's anything wrong with toys. I don't push them, mm -hmm. but there's things that people don't talk about about sex i mean you can go to any sex toy shop and look at dildos all day right. long and find <laughs> out what they do just read the back of a package right <laughs> but do you honestly know if that's something you need or want or anything like that so when people come to me in this industry like i'm personal i will get all up in their business i'll right. be like really want to try and find that golden ticket i am all <laughs> up in there like, have you ever used a toy before? No? Okay, then put that one that does 850 thrusts back on the shelf because you right. don't need that one. <laughs> oh, I'm dry. Okay, let's try this. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I don't want them to feel like they're just, like if you go to Hustlers of Hollywood down in Monroe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're put into a room where you've got thousands of choices. And then you're looking around like, um, hmm, I think that one does. And then you get home, it's absolutely horrible. And you're like, oh, I just wasted 80 bucks on something. Or when you go to places like that, they don't teach you proper toy care. Mm -hmm. So now you go at home and, you know, within a month, you're like, oh, it's broken. 
oh, let me go buy another one, pay another 80 bucks for something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because they are not teaching what people learn through actual taking sexology courses or anything like that. When they go to these toy shops, when they have these in-home parties. And for me, that's the basic of self-care, like knowing what each of these are going to do, how to take care of them, because it's your vaginal health that you're jeopardizing. Right. So um, I want to jump right into it because you mentioned it. Please explain to our viewers and listeners what toy care is and what is the best way to keep their toys up. So toy care is basically, I, I say, I like to look at it like these are your children. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't put your children to bed without bed clothes. Right. So put your toy to get it to bed with something that is more of a satin or silk material. If you can buy an antibacterial material, mm -hmm. um, that's even better. Like I can tell you right now, there's everybody, including myself, that sells the sugar sacks. Mm -hmm. They are not a one size fits all. Not every toy is going to fit in there. Not every toy is going to need this huge bag of antibacterial lining. Um, but you can buy a antibacterial material you go to any craft or fabric store um and that is the safest thing to wrap your toys in what that does is it prevents these dust particles and everything else that even cloth um, accumulate mm -hmm. you know because you get that dust you know from toilet paper paper towels uh mm -hmm. regular mm -hmm. cotton regular cotton towels you get that like fibers and these fibers over time will break down your toy and that is also why we tell you even though you're storing it even if it's stored in the antibacterial bags, it's proper care to clean it before and after use because there's particles all around us in the air. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to clean it even before use because now you've done headed out in these particles, you know, that's all around there's us every bacteria. day. bacteria. Mm -hmm. And you're putting them in your vagina. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your vagina is going to rebuttal this like, uh-uh, oh, no, no, no. And it comes up as a bacterial infection, yeast right. infection, um, bacterial vaginosis. You know, everybody's heard of, probably heard of that. You get tested mm -hmm. for it when you're pregnant. So um, what, what is the best kind of um, cleaning solution to use? Honestly, everybody thinks when they buy a toy and you will have toy care or toy representatives tell you buy a specific brand of toy care cleaner it's any antibacterial mild soap and okay. hot water to take care of your toys but you also want to make sure that when i talk about toy care um, that you realize that there's a little bit more than just the cleansing aspect of it but you want to make sure that you're not using the wrong lubes with it you want to make sure that you're not storing it next to a certain kind of toy and things like that, because all of these can lead to that. While there are toy cleaners that are made specifically for toys, we have a lube that's or a cleaner that's made specifically for anal toys. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people don't understand an, act, an antibacterial mild soap, such as Dawn dish soap, anything like that can actually clean your toys. Okay. So you don't have to pay for the expensive toy cleaner, or anything like that. If you want the convenience of it, it's where you don't have to read and say, oh, is this antibacterial? Oh, is this considered mild? Then yes, buy a toy care. Um, my favorite it, brand is Wicked. Mm -hmm. I love the Wicked line of, of products. Um, and they offer a great one. But like I said, it's making sure that they're clean. Because whatever you're putting into your vagina, you want to make sure that it is absolutely the cleanest you can possibly get it before insertion. Right. So um, before use, after use, and even if you're not using it um, for a long time, it, you should maintain it like anything else. Correct. Correct. That's why I said your toy is like your baby. You know, you're not putting it to bed without clothes on. You're not leaving it neglected in the, in the drawer somewhere. You want to make sure that it's still. Um, and if you leave it in a drawer, say for a couple months without using it, you're going to want to get it out and inspect it. Um, and that's why I said loops are important. And how if you store it next to other toys. A silicone lube will break down a silicone toy. Um, a silicone toy laid next to another silicone toy will break that down. And these make microscopic holes in your toy. So I always recommend that if you haven't used it in a while, you're kind of looking around your toy to see if there's any scratches, if there's any kind of holes in it um, and things like that, because those are what you need to be aware of that are can inhabit or the bacteria get all these growth starting because 
you know, like any bacterial infection, they're looking for that warm, moist place. So before you store yeah, to, it, to, you to also harvest, want to make sure it's basically. dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sorry, you might hear you might hear one of my kids yelling in the background because it's it's okay. I got them it's out okay. there. It Listen, was my sister. You you know how you get those kids? Yes, I know how I got kids. Some people <laughs> some people don't realize how I got them kids. <laughs> um so just if you give me a second, um my phone battery just died that has all of my questions. Um oh, but I believe that, yes. that the Thank next you, question you. is how did you start your sexual journey? So I started out with, um, I've, my parents were always open about sex. Like I could ask them anything. And then a lot of mine, when I was 16, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian disease. Mm -hmm. I was told that I would never have children and everything else. So I became self-aware of my body. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes that's a bad thing. It really is. Um, it took me a long time to realize that self-love like if you don't love your body inside and out you know what you want what you don't want what you like what you don't like it's a it's bad all around nobody right. can love you more than you can love yourself um so I started that when I was about 16 looking into different things because of this diagnosis um and with that came a slew of problems the vaginal dryness and different things and that's how I've learned and developed and went from when I started at 19 saying, Oh, I'm going to sell sex toys because sex sells to I'm going to teach you sexual health and wellness. That's not taught today. I mean, a lot of people, even now, you know, you're taught different things in sex education, but what are you taught in sex education? You're taught how to, how to put on a condom, how to mm -hmm. get free condoms. Mm -hmm. But does anybody actually talk about sexual health and wellness? Um, for example, you know, I believe that every girl from the time of her first menstrual cycle that she decides to use a tampon needs a bottle of lube. And it's very interesting. You're giving me this look. I'm going to explain <laughs> why. Because I want to know why. It's not to encourage sexual activities. It's not to teach these kids to go out and have sex. But every girl needs a bottle of lube. As you got older, you've had... Hi, I'm Casey, Dr. Casey. Welcome to Speaking Freedom. We are happy to have you and we hope that we're able to help you in every way possible. Have a good evening. Pap smears done. What is the very first thing they do before inserting that speculum? They put the first of all, it's a, it's a clean environment. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. open it up a few seconds prior to insertion, but they lube it. Right. If you've ever had an internal ultrasound done when you're pregnant, what's the first thing they do to that wand? They lube it. Yeah, so why are lube. women taking these tampons that has a plastic applicator that feels like a Barilla pad wrapped in barbed wire <laughs> shoved up into their vaginas without a lube. Why? Your menstrual cycle is the time that you are the most dry in that right. area. And now you're shoving something dry with a hard plastic casing that can scrape mm -hmm. your interior lining of your mm. cervix and everything else. Why are we doing it without a lube? And you so, know, all my nieces, it's so funny, excuse me, when you say that, because I never even considered the damage that the plastic from the tampon can do to the internal vaginal compartments. Um, it never even dawned on me until you just said this right now. Until yeah, right now. It's the same, thing, it's the same thing with the diva cups. I mean, anything that you're, you, you're putting into your vagina that is not natural to be there mm -hmm. has a chance of damaging any kind of your uterine lining, your vaginal walls, any of those muscles. I mean, and we're taking chances with that. I never and even so considered ever, that it could be damp, like that your v vaginal um walls could be damaged. That never even like, Lord, even as a sex coach, it never even was like, okay, well, could you damage it? Because, um, instinctually, you don't think that that could be damaged because it's an internal organ. Um, versus right. something like getting a scratch on your arm or something, but I definitely understand and get it. So, excuse me for my face earlier. I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just have this quiz of like, look, like, um, why is this? <laughs> like, you know, my daughter just started her period, and I'm trying to figure out why does she need some lube already. <laughs> well, that's what a lot of people said because I gave it to my nieces when they mm -hmm. were 15, 16 years old and they started using tampons to go to the pool. I they each had a bottle of lube, and everybody's like, yeah. 
what are you doing? And even my sisters, they're like, I don't want them having sex. I said, it's not about sex. Mm -hmm. It's about them taking care of their vaginal health starting at such a young age. Think about it. When you first have a baby and they're first, and you said you have kids, so I don't know Mm -hmm. if they're boys or girls, but if they're girls, what's the first thing you teach a girl? You wipe front to back. Right. Why? You're protecting her vaginal care. When Mm -hmm. you have a little boy, if they're circumcised, what's the first thing you teach them when they're old enough to pull that foreskin back and clean in there? Mm -hmm. At some point, we stop with our children. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, okay, they know to wipe front to back. But as they get older, their needs and stuff of what they need to know for this vaginal health, we don't teach them. Right. And 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 I'm not saying that, you know, it's not something that parent, because we don't consciously think of it. We don't, we think and then we taught nobody the taught us in most pla- most cases, nobody specifically taught us the aftercare, like once you get your period, um, how to take care of your body, making, well, nobody taught me. Uh, my mother wasn't really a hands-on type of mother, so I had to figure out everything about my cycle and my period and even sex kind of on my own or from other relatives that were a little bit more open to discussing. Right. And honestly, and that's um, where I've gotten into this business, because a lot of women did not have that support. And there's still so many today that mm-hmm. don't have that support or or don't even it's not a conscious part of their mind to, oh, you know what? My daughter's using tampons. I'll I'll go buy her tampons. And, and they don't have that second thought. There is a re- I always tell everybody there is a reason when you go to that tampon aisle, if you notice in every store lubes kind of everything right else is in mm-hmm. that same model mm-hmm. for a mm-hmm. reason you know it, it's for a reason but we are instinctively we're like oh well you know our kids know white front to back this mm-hmm. that and the other mm-hmm. but what they don't understand that's great for boys boys you teach them how to pull that foreskin down and clean that you're good to go for the rest of your life right 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 you know, girls, they know they gotta grow. clean mm-hmm. with women's bodies are so intricately different from a man's that there's more to our sexual health and wellness and our vaginal care than any man could ever need. You know, Mm -hmm. I always recommend Yanni steams and Yanni washes and stuff like that, because it's so great to have that vaginal cleanse and rebalance your pH, everything, try to heal all that damage. And that's why these Yanni steams and stuff were so popular after childbirth. Mm -hmm. because you've been damaged from the inside and it just helps tighten all that back up and take care of your vaginal health. So, you know, most people don't, they don't think about it. It's just like in one ear out the other ear. So uh, lube is like everybody's best friend. I recommend Mm -hmm. every woman have a bottle of lube in her purse at all times. Well, I don't have lube because I am naturally lubricated um, very much uh, so and, and well. So I've never needed to even think like I think I might have got some when maybe I got a toy before, but I just didn't. Well, I don't like toys. So having the loop was kind of like, eh, whatever, because the toy wasn't like I'm a more hands on touchy feely. I need to, you know, especially when it comes to self pleasure, because when I'm with a, a person, I'm normally with a man um, and that's all I've ever really been with. Uh, but. I like to embrace and hold the skin to skin contact is important for me. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the orgasm or the arousal or none of that. Like a guy doesn't even have to go down on me necessarily because I need the penetration. I need to feel all of the energy that goes through that type of connection. So it's always been a little bit different for me. Right. And and that's the thing. Like, even though you're naturally lubricated when it's your time of the month, you're I, well, I can tell you, you let me just say this um when I did have a period it used to be so thick and heavy that it I didn't have a um like a dryness type of a problem um however I no longer have cycles praise the lord and um <laughs> this is the best thing that happened to me I'll because, let you know when I get to that point <laughs> <laughs> well I did I had a hysterectomy because I had I was having some endometriosis going on and um, just my cycle had got very heavy. I got Morena um, after my second child. I thought I was pregnant. I was terrified because my ex-husband was in a good support system for having babies with. And um, I eventually I got my tubes tied. I got the Morena before I got my tubes tied and the Morena started coming out and it was like stabbing me. Like I could be driving down the road and I would be doubled over because 
I feel like I'm being stabbed in my stomach. So that eventually was taken out. And when that got taken out, then I went ahead and um, my tubes was tied for a long time, which kind of was helpful, kind of was not. But I eventually ended up having a hysterectomy, which um, because I would be like flu like symptoms for three, four days. I couldn't eat. It was just very crazy. Now, I don't know how much me having Graves disease um, affected that because, you know, that's a hormone thing. So my periods right. got extremely heavy and it was I was basically miserable um, at least once a month for a few days. So I eventually had the hysterectomy and life has been great ever since. I mean, not great, well, but I'm, you know, <laughs> that part. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up like the hormonal issue of that because a lot of people don't realize that um, any kind of medications um, and you brought up Graves disease, um, medical conditions and everything like that actually has an impact on your sex life um, and your vaginal health, men's health um, with the ED and things like that. And people don't realize that um, when I get customers that come to me, like I will straight up ask them, like I said, I'm like Willy Wonka trying to find the golden mm-hmm. ticket. I am up in their business, like 100% up in there. Like, you know, do you have this? Have you been diagnosed with this? Do you take antidepressants? And mm-hmm. a lot of that is because um, so many as things the chemicals in our body are imbalanced, it affects our sexual health. Like mm-hmm. antidepressants cause low libido, dryness, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. diabetes causes low libido, dryness, dry mouth. I mean, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you said it yourself, like, you know, you're not all into the toys and that's what people admit. Everybody thinks they're bored in their relationship. And that's where I was getting to the point with like, I'm a little bit different, even though, yes, I sell the sex toys. I don't push them. Mm -hmm. I push more on the lubes and enhancement creams to enhance the sex life um, without it being a joke. You know, like everybody likes to do it parties. Now don't get me wrong. My, my games at parties can be raunchy as hell. But the information I'm giving you is not a joking matter because it is your sexual health. Um, And I always tell them, like, you know, if you're taking any of these medications, look into ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. Ashwagandha is a great natural supplement. I don't get paid. I just recently heard somebody mention that. And then I looked it up and I meant to I think I meant to buy some. But that is a new um, herb or natural um, remedy of sorts that I have just been made aware of. So tell us a little bit about that. So first, let me say, I, I'm not affiliated with anybody that sells ashwagandha. I don't make money off of anybody looking into ashwagandha. Um, it's just a personal experience with it. Um, so I have polycystic ovarian disease, which is a hormonal imbalance. Mm-hmm. So ashwagandha, um, it's actually been used for centuries. It's just new to like the Midwestern knowledge mm-hmm. for us to even see it starting to become popular but it is like an overall balancer so if you have a sexual issue and you go to the doctor and you're like hey i'm having low libido they're going to treat that they're going to treat the low libido but they're not treating the chemical imbalance mm-hmm. that's causing that mm-hmm. you know when you get on an antidepressant it's altering your chemicals in your brain and the serotonin and stuff like that to make you feel good with these antidepressants but that's all it's touching Mm -hmm. ashwagandha is almost an overall balancer i mean it helps with mood it helps with energy it helps with not that everybody wants this but like if you are experiencing like that dryness down there or the low libido Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um by day seven or eight of taking it you're gonna be looking like Oh, he's looking pretty good. It could be anybody <laughs> walking on the street. Because so it's go, it, it to helps go. with arousal and just um, balancing your hormones. It sounds like I, I'm definitely it, it, um, yeah. I am interested in ordering some just because I heard of some of the greatness um, that it can have on your body. But my next question is a little bit from what you do and more about you. What is your wildest fantasy? So don't don't freeze up now, Amanda. Thing, you got I... this. <laughs> so no, this has always been my thing since I was a kid, but um, or as a teenager and stuff. Um, I am a thrill seeker. I okay. love the adrenaline rush. Love the thrill of how that adrenaline can pump i have always wanted to have sex on a roller coaster on a impossible to do but it sounds like 
got a lot of fun in my brain. Nothing is impossible. You just have to be at the right park with the right staff at the right time to let it all happen. Um, what is the most surprising thing that you've discovered about sex? Um, so a lot of it, you know, we're taught to like masturbation bad and things like that is that it's actually one way that you can figure out how to love yourself more than anybody else could. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, you do realize what you like and what you don't like. Um, so there, the woman's body is fascinating in any aspect of it. Um, and you learn so much just like, uh, when you're pregnant, I wanted to have a home birth. And like when you want to have a home birth or a water birth or anything like that, they teach you that having an orgasm can help increase the oxytocin so that you don't need Pitocin to move labor along faster. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell you to do nipple play and things like that to increase these oxytocins. And you're like, wait a minute. I never, (laughs) I never thought about nipple play or anything. So a lot of that is like, shocking to know but then it I, it's fascinating to know at the same time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um what have you learned from your own sexual encounters so i'm kind of like you i'm not the toy person mm-hmm. i like at, at you new little if you've enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. New episode every Friday.